looking for ways to make your practicing more productive? If so, you're in the right place. My name is John Curacala, and here are my tips to make your practicing more productive. Remember that even if you have a teacher, you're your own teacher more often than not. Thus, while a teacher can help you, it's up to you to set goals and set good practice habits for yourself that will lead to success. Luckily, it's really not as hard as it seems. Here are some simple pointers. First, set a regular time and stick to it or plan your practice time according to your schedule. Next, set goals when you practice. It can be all too easy to sit down and noodle around and waste time on the clarinet for a half an hour. I know this because I'm a serial noodler. As we all lead very busy lives with lots of activities, it makes sense to have a plan to make the most out of the little time you do have. Be intentional with your time. Next, make a lesson plan for yourself if this helps and be as specific as you need to. At the end of your practice session, evaluate. Did you accomplish your plan? If it helps, keep a notebook or diary of your practice times and accomplishments for you to review. It can really be helpful and motivating to look and see what you've accomplished over a period of time or in the week between lessons. Number four, Consider using a dedicated metronome and tuner and put your phone on do not disturb and out of reach. All it takes is a few notifications and you're out of the zone. Did you know that once you lose focus, it can take as long as five minutes or more to get it back? Tip number five, two or three practice sessions are probably more effective than one marathon session. As a start, consider one practice session for warm-ups and rudiments, scales, etc. One for rep, etudes and solo work, and one for read work. I have another video for that as well. You can combine and mix these up as you find what works for you and your schedule. Number six, building on number five, be consistent throughout your practice in the way you approach the clarinet. If you start with long tones, making your most beautiful sound, your scales should have the same beautiful sound. Your etudes should sound like your scales. Your solos and excerpts should sound like your etudes. Let the good stuff trickle down. Remember that most phrases are essentially moving your fingers over a long tone. Number seven, rhythm, rhythm, rhythm. Do not settle for something that is close enough. Get that pencil out and mark in beats if you have to. If you need help figuring out a rhythm, don't hesitate to ask. Trust me, your teachers will appreciate it. Number eight, along with accurate rhythm, use a metronome and stick to it like glue. The metronome will help you stay consistent between practice sessions and keep you from going too fast too soon, keeping in line with my idea that practicing should always be easy, not frustrating. Be patient. This is a process, right? Tip number nine, practice your scales and other rudiments with a metronome daily. It may be hard to do at first, but spending at least a little time every practice session learning your scales will do wonderful things for you. Your technique and sight reading will improve. You'll be developing not only a great technique, but good tone, rhythm, and most importantly, the muscular endurance you need to get through a concert. If it helps, think of scales as tone exercises rather than technique exercises. It's all a part of a link in a chain. Again, your long tones should be the best sound you can make. Your scales should sound like your long tones. Your etude should sound like your scales. Your solo should sound like your etudes. Think of your scales as a tone exercise. This really made a big difference for me. Tip number 10, practice difficult passages slowly. Even if you have to go ridiculously slow, you're better off practicing slowly and accurately than trying to rush through a passage you can't play while making a lot of mistakes. Again, use the metronome to keep a consistent tempo. My teacher, Ron DeCant, used to quote his teacher, Daniel Bernard, practice difficult passages 10 times slow and one time fast. I also have a video on this if you need more explanation. Tip number 11, when it comes to speeding up passages after you practice slowly, don't forget your two best friends, metronome notch by notch and practicing with different rhythms. Does this sound overly simple? It is, but track your metronome speeds, write them down and work to improve on them. Number 12, don't forget to record yourself. A dedicated recorder like a Zoom H4n is great, but expensive. You can definitely use your phone, but I'd recommend placing it a little further away to get a better perspective. Also, don't let yourself get sucked back into your phone. 
put it away after recording, and listen later. It's usually good to get some distance from a performance before listening to it in any case. Tip number 13. Expect only the best from yourself, and that is what you'll get. Does it have to be perfectly up to tempo by the end of a practice session? No. But this is important for setting goals as you move ahead. It's really gratifying to claim that victory over a difficult passage after working diligently on it for a week. And finally, be forgiving of yourself and others. It seems that in some ways, empathy and kindness is in short supply these days. I'd encourage all of you to not only be patient with yourselves, but with your colleagues, friends, and other fellow musicians. You'll develop a much healthier attitude towards your practicing and your relationships with your fellow musicians. And that's it for this week. Thank you again for tuning in, and I wish you all the very best for an amazing 2024. I truly appreciate your support and everybody who's been watching my videos. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.